So yesterday, during this NATO anniversary, 75th NATO anniversary summit in Washington, Joe Biden gave a speech. And in the speech, at one point, he referred to Vice President Kamala Harris as Vice President Trump. And then hours before he made that statement, he referred to President Zelensky, who is the president of Ukraine, as President Putin. And, you know, it's very concerning, you know what I'm saying? I was thinking about why it's so concerning. And I realized that, you know, <clears throat> when you're a president, when you're giving orders to people in your cabinet and you're saying something and you're really meaning another thing, and what if, you know, your subordinates or whoever you who's working for you in your cabinet doesn't really want to question you? You know, it's, I, you know, I guess it would be kind of improper to question the boss. You know what I mean? Like, you know, well, are you sure you want to do that, sir? You know what I mean? Like saying that to him, to your boss is, is kind of, you know, it may be kind of intimidating for a lot of people. Um, but with. Biden, you got to do that. You have to like really ask him, okay, you kind of you kind of got to break it down to him. Whatever he says, you got to kind of like lay it out for him to make sure that that's what he wants. And see, those are the mistakes that you can make. And in that job, how important that job is, bro, you can't make them type of mistakes. You know, last night when he called Kamala Harris Vice President, Vice President Trump, he just kept going. He didn't even know he said that. You know what I'm saying? He was thinking about Trump in his in his mind. But, you know what I'm saying? So that's why he said his name instead of saying Vice President Harris. He said Vice President Trump. And he just kept going, bro. He didn't even know. And the same thing when he when he mistake uh, uh when he uh uh mistakenly said President Putin trying to really refer to uh, President Zelensky. He was trying to say Zelensky. And he just kept, I think, well, I didn't hear that one, but I heard the one uh, um, of him calling Kamala Harris pres Vice President Trump. And he just kept going, bro. Like, like what if you're in a situation where you're trying to give somebody an order to do something and you're saying one thing when you really mean something else and that person may just leave and just go do it. They may not want to question you. You the president, you the boss, you know, in the White House, you know what I'm saying? You the boss there. You know, the subordinates may not want to question you or break your, you know, break your uh, your statement, your order down, you know what I'm saying? But you probably got to do that. And see, bro, that's bad. That's bad, bro. That's bad. And, and only, only 17 Democrats have come out to say that. Biden needs to end his reelection campaign. Only only 17. It's like 213 Democrats. You know what I'm saying? Um, and only 17 have come out. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's a small, that's a small, you know, minority. That's a small percentage, you know, uh, of the total, total amount of, of Democrats. There. You know, I wonder what the other ones are thinking. Maybe they're thinking that we don't have anybody else to run and Joe Biden is it. And and really they they kind of don't like, you know they got Gavin Newsom and and um, and Kamala Harris, but those two people lose against Trump. And according to these polls that I've seen, they lose. The only person that will win by a clear advantage, uh, by you know, the only person that would clearly win against Trump would be Michelle Obama. I saw in one uh, poll that was saying that one survey or whatever they did with some people, uh, it was like a population of a thousand people and they and they gave them choices, Democrats who they would uh, vote for besides Biden, who could beat Trump. Well, it didn't, it wasn't based on who could beat Trump. It was just a, a, a survey uh, asking voters, a th it was a thousand voters that they that they asked, who would you vote for besides Biden, a Democrat besides Biden? And like 50% of them said that they would vote for 
uh, Michelle Obama, uh, opposed to 39% uh, saying that they would vote for Trump. So Michelle would, would have, would win by, you know, it would be 50%, it, it was 50% of the votes went to Michelle and 39% went to uh, Trump. And with all the other candidates, like, you know, Kamala Harris and Gavin Newsom and some more Democrats they had on, on there, um, all of them lost, you know what I'm saying? Biden was a tie. So, you know, he was he was the best bet, you know what I'm saying? Uh, at least get a tie, you know. That way you can kind of, you know, cheat a little bit and, and maybe get sneak some votes in somewhere, you know, somewhere in America you can sneak some votes in. Maybe some dead absentee ballots, dead people's uh, absentee ballots or something like that. You know, who knows, bro? Um, but it's just crazy to see uh, Joe Biden in his state, bro. Like, you know, and he... He doesn't want to, you know. I, I don't think he wants to run. You know, I don't. I don't believe he really wants to w run again, cause he is probably tired. And he like, damn, you know, I'm old. I'm 81 years old, bro. I'm ready to go. Um, but a majority of the Democrats, you know, what I'm saying they still riding with him. You know, they still want him to to uh, go up against Trump. He has the best chance, cause Michelle Obama said many times that she's not interested in running for office. So you know that, you no, know, so. You can't depend on her, you know what I'm saying? She's definitely definitely not going to run. So all you got is Joe Biden, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kamala Harris, she just don't have enough star power, bro. She just, she just I don't know what it is. You know, maybe it has something to do with, you know, her race and, and she's a woman and all that. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't know, bro. You know, she's just not electrifying enough, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, she's she's mainly kept quiet as vice president uh, over these years. She's me I, I haven't really seen her come out to too many events or, or do anything really. I'm sure she's doing stuff behind the scenes that we can't see, but like she's not really stepping in the spotlight. And I don't know if that's the job of a vice president to do. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, who knows? But she hasn't really been out like that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she doesn't want to be out like that. Who knows? But she definitely definitely hasn't raised her, you know, approval ratings or anything like that. And in order to do that, I would imagine you need to get out there and, and you know, talk to the people, um, be out in the public so the cameras can see you, you know, say something about something. You know what I'm saying? You need to be out and about as a president, man. It's, it's you know, it's really like a, you know, it's a fashion show. It's a it's a Miss America, you know, type of situation. You got to be out um, and being you, you have to be judged by people. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, Joe Biden is all they got. But it's just sad to see that he is basically forcing himself to run for president again because he's the only one that can win. You know, I'm sure Joe Biden don't want to win. Like he said in 2020. He said, I'm just a transitional, a, a transitory, what do you say? I, he said, I'm a transitory president for the Pete Buttigiegs of the world. You know what I'm saying? We want, you know, I'm just, he was basically saying, I'm just trying to get rid of Trump so, and serve four years and get someone young to become president. That's basically what he said in 2020. I don't know if nobody remember that, but I remember him saying that. He said, "I, you know, I'm a transitory president. I don't know if he said it like if he just wrote, if he wrote it or somebody quoted him privately or whatever, but, you know, he said that. And, you know, Pete Buttigieg probably never be president. You know, it, it, it'll take some generations to die out before he becomes president because I don't think the world is ready to see a, uh, a president with a first gentleman, you know what I'm saying, with, you know, I don't think the the world is ready to see that because I, I I believe he yeah yeah he does have a a, a a husband or whatever, Pete Buttigieg you know. So you know I I don't think the world is ready to see something like that. It's gonna take, you know you got to get rid of you definitely got to get rid of the baby boomers to see something like that. You got to get rid of uh, Generation X, uh, my generation, Generation Y. You know half of us don't really want to see that neither. So you got to get rid of us as well. And see, you know, Generation Z would have to be where the baby boomers at are at right now, you know, in order to see a 
a um, a gay homosexual uh, president, man or woman. Um, you know, so it, it, it you know, it, it'll takes it'll take us dying out. You know, we we would all have to die out before we see something like that. Before Pete Buttigieg, Buttigieg, or someone like him, others like him, um, anybody from the LGBTQ community uh, that wants to become president. Um, it's a long shot. It's a long shot for y'all. I hate it. I hate it that it's like that, but it, but it's just that's just the way it is. Baby boomers are not ready to see that definitely because they come from a, a a different type of you know a different time. You know, what I'm saying that whole Bible thing. You know, the Bible and the Christians and all that. You know, what I'm saying nah, you, you you're not going to become. You know, it's it's going to be very hard to become president if you gay. So you know. You know, uh, but I, but I understood what Biden was saying. He was like, you know, I'm just I'm just filling in right now to get rid of Trump. I got the best chance of beating him, and we need him out of there. That's what he was saying at the time. Uh, and I'm just a transitory type of president for new leaders, for young leaders, um, which would be good, bro. We would love to see some young people in there. You know, what I'm saying we'd love to see somebody, some you know, Generation X. Um, generation Y, even you know, get, look get, if we can get like a forty-something-year-old in there, that'd be great. You know, what I'm saying that'd be great. Um, but you know, man, I, 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 I would like to see what happens with Biden. <laughs> he probably ain't gonna drop out, but not until a majority of the Democrats be like, "Look, bro, you gotta, you gotta go." Uh, but they don't really have no other choice. So what can you do? 